All right. So you guys should be able to see my screen now. All good? Um, not yet. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just start with an introduction. I'm Mary Drews. Um, I am a nurse executive at Indiana University Health, and I am here to just share some leadership insights from my lens, which is a um, nurse executive. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself to go ahead and get started. Um, so this is me, and just in a nutshell, my background, I have, you know, my family there in the middle, uh, my little grandson, and then for me personally, my faith is really important to me, and that really guides who I am as a person, and just on my, in my free time, I like to be outside and enjoy the um, hiking and walking and enjoying the outside, so that's me in a nutshell on the outside. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the health system that I work in, for those of you that we probably know IU Health, but we're Indiana's largest and most comprehensive health system. We have 16 hospitals that span the state, um, and we have 34,000 team members within our facilities, and then about 9,000 nurses. And then for me, just my role to give you a little bit of background about what I do. I've been a nurse for 25 years. I have been in leadership about the last um, 15 of them. And my role is Associate Chief Nurse Executive for System Nursing Operations. So that really, the, the nutshell is integrating the strategic plan into day-to-day -day operations for the nurses. Anything that impacts um, their day-to-day -day that I, I can help with and improve the, the quality and the safety for our team members and our patients, that, that is my wheelhouse. So some of the people that I partner with and my strategic partners every day are the executive teams in the regions, um, I work really closely with finance, with pharmacy, supply chain, quality risk, safety, HR, um, talent acquisition, legal, and um, supply chain. So that's my job in a nutshell. And so I was thinking about this conversation and I wanted to share, um, I was thinking, what would I want to know if I'm looking back on myself and, and me in college and thinking about entering the workforce, what, what would I want to tell my, myself? And so I started here. So it'll be a, um, I'll start here with entering the workforce and how I approach this um, later in life, though, after attending an executive um, leadership conference, which I thought was really helpful. Um, and then I'll go into just some some um, of my top tips that are top of mind as it pertains to leadership and as you guys think about entering the workforce and, and especially being women and entering the workforce so um, entering the workforce so soon i'm not sure where what level you guys are at or if you're getting close but soon you'll be entering that um finding that job and trying to figure out where you want to go after graduation so when that time comes i want to share with you a little exercise that i did at a, um, an executive leadership class at Notre Dame. Um, and it was a lot of fun and it probably the most insightful activity I probably have done in my career, to be honest. So um, really the whole point of this is to know, know what you want and then more importantly, really land on what you don't want. So um, part of the exercise is getting yourself organized in, in three groups, non-negotiables, nice to have, take it or leave it. And so the way this exercise is done, you think about all the attributes that you desire or any kind of attribute that you can have with employment, um, the culture, any of the benefits. And some of the things that come to mind are like compensation for sure, right? Benefits, autonomy in an environment. Do you like to work alone? Do you like to travel? Do you not like to travel? Um, do you want an upward trajectory? Is that important to you? So you kind of get the point. It's all of those things that any kind of attribute about a job that make is important to you. And then you really just, you make three lists and we had little cards. It was a, like a deck of cards they gave us and said, now make your piles. And really it was such a great exercise. I would really encourage you to do some sort of that um, because it's really hard to figure out where you want to go. Um, you guys are going to be well trained. You're going to have degrees. The work it's a prime time to enter the workforce. You're going to have options more than likely. So it's really like where why would you pick one over the other? And it's really important to really reflect before you go out there 
and say, what is important to me? And what do I want to make sure is a non-negotiable? Um, what's it nice to have? And then what's it take it or leave it? And so that's just a little fun exercise that you can do as you think about, um, again, where you want to work. And for me personally, for non-negotiables for me, um, I expect fair market value for pay. I think that's fair, right? But more importantly to that for me is culture. Uh, it is important that I have a positive culture where people around me, I enjoy coming to work every day more so than the actual work. You know, um, and then also I want autonomy, the freedom um, to do my work and, and express it in my own way and, and meet the end goal because we know we can achieve things in different ways. Um, so having those, if those are like the top three things for me and then flexibility for me um, as, a, as a wife and a mom, um, as children and now grandchild, that's important to me to have some flexibility where I can adjust to the needs of my family, um, personally and professionally. So I think you kind of get the idea, but any, any questions about that? All right, very good. All right, so then I'm gonna move on to now that you have the job. So some of the things that I wanted to just talk about that are really important for you to think about, and I'm sure you've learned a lot about these, but just wanna share some um, feedback from my lens and my experience. So advocate for yourself, and we'll talk about each one of these. Imposter syndrome is a real thing. It happens to everyone. Relationships matter. I would encourage you to be a lifelong learner. And then of course, prioritize self-care and well-being. So advocating for yourself. So be present, speak up, exude confidence, um, trust that inner voice. You know, the goals, I would say that the goals, aspirations, any of your desires that we're thinking about now, if I were to look back on myself at a younger self, I would say they were too small. Think big, take risks. And some of the strategies, because as women, there's a lot of literature around this, that women innately are not comfortable, um, as comfortable as men, I would say. Some are more than others, but um, in general, research tells us that women just are not that comfortable speaking up and saying exactly what we want, taking risk. Um, that is just what we know through all the literature. So three strategies that you can do to just work on that, even to start with personally and professionally, but start small, practice, practice, practice. Is in, it's just really about conveying what you want. And honestly, you can start in day-to-day -day things. Those little practices and that it really will lead to big results down the road. And then make empathy your advantage. And what I mean by that, because uh, it does seem counterintuitive to what we're trying to accomplish here to assert yourself, but then seem empathetic. But really, that is about um, research also tells us that when you're trying to understand the needs of your colleagues and your peers, that will lead to better results, that collaboration and trying to see their perspective. Um, again, the research says when you consider what they want while you're trying to um, get something accomplished, it will lead to better results. And then lastly, team up. So this is especially if you're the novice, maybe new to the workforce or new to an environment, you know, find someone that you can lean into, um, kind of do that politicking before the meeting where you work together and kind of run it by them. So you go into that scenario or situation as a we instead of an I. And again, just practice in day to day. And again, women, for some reason, I think a lot of you might agree that it, you've seen it's really hard for women to say what we want and just convey it. So that is a muscle we need to exercise. So I would encourage that. Very much so. And that will get better over time. Um, imposter syndrome. You guys have heard about this, I'm sure, in your, in your work. Okay. So it's totally real. It happens to everyone. It is very subtle and slick, and you really have to be aware of it and mindful of it. So I thought these were good visuals. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this one before, but what I think people know, that's what you end up feeling like. They know everything, and I know this much. Um, but really the reality is that everybody, you have a spot at the table, you were, you received that job for a reason, you know, plenty to be there, but, you know, we do have to shut that down and, and be aware of that and kind of change that flip the script in our head. So just know that that's, um, that is a real thing and you, you will experience that likely one or twice in your career. And especially we're vulnerable to that when we're entering a new job 
job transitions. And of course, over time, as you progress in your career, anytime you step into a new role, those feelings will bubble up. And then there's some tips on the other side about how, you know, how some tips you can do when it strikes. And so I, I can share this with you guys, this PowerPoint, but um, just remember, it's about recognizing it and kind of shutting it down and flipping that script in your mind. And remember, you earned a spot where you are, you're qualified, and, and try to channel that into a different type of energy. Just know that you deserve to succeed. Um, the other big thing is relationships matter. So over time, when you think about what sets apart a, um, a really successful person, women, man, relationships, when you get to a certain point in your career and level, um, getting out of the tactical, managerial, relationships matter. They really do. And it can't, I, it, it's really important that you know that going in. Um, so really work on building healthy relationships early. And this will help, you know, create your own personal brand. You know, we all desire to be seen as um, women of integrity, women that work hard. Um, relationships are key. And sometimes it doesn't come innately to, to women. And, you know, I work as a nurse and I grew up as a nurse in, in my professional career and us more than anybody, we shamefully have this incivility that has been like legacy incivility. And there, I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's a saying that nurses eat their young. And that is not something I'm very proud of, but it happens. But I am really astounded as I see it, as I get older and it just, um, that kind of never goes away, believe it or not. It's not just like a high school thing. So um, I would just challenge you to find your tribe, surround yourself with a tribe that will advocate for you, that will inspire you, challenge you, be honest with you. Those people that will feel good and shine and be so happy when you shine and when you succeed. Um, so then once you have that, you know, then you include others. And I would also encourage inclusivity, especially in the world we're in right now, you know, we really have to um, be inclusive, lead by example, and then pay it forward. And so I, I hope that is a strong takeaway for you. It's, um, I can't underestimate the power of relationships, because this is what I tell my own kids and people that I mentor, your education, and you, that gets you a ticket in the door, like you get the job, that's your ticket in the door, but then it's really up to you to cultivate that that culture that you want to be a part of the culture maybe that you thought about when you were doing that exercise of what's a non-negotiable well i'm going to be in a healthy culture a part of that is relationships so and we need that as women especially um not saying you can't have part of your tribe can't be um men that's not a problem but really we need to lean on each other and women as women and really support one another and again lift each other up so i would encourage that then never stop learning. So um, who owns your development? And it's it's you do, right? Like we all own our own professional development. And I, I do see this a lot. And that's um, for people that I have led or mentored. Um, maybe there's a passiveness about um, their development, waiting maybe for their leader to take action. But I will tell you that it really, you need to be in the driver's seat. Your leader is there to help guide you. Mentor can help, but really it's up to us. And that's something that I probably didn't learn early enough in my career, but it's really important that um, you, you own your own development. So that looks like what that looks like. And this is part of building your own brand. It's um, the relationships is one piece, but this is another facet of that, right? You want to be known as a high integrity leader and, and employee and colleague. And so that part of that is doing the legwork with staying informed in the industry um, through journals, books, conferences, professional organizations. It's never too early to join in that. And then I would encourage everyone always to have a professional and personal development plan and really challenge yourself to um, monitor it, measure the progress. And then also, have you guys done any personality tests with your program? Does any of these look familiar? DISC, Strength Finders, Enneagram. Okay. So that's really important um, and fun too. It's a fun exercise to really understand because the value of those is you really understand 
what are your risk points, right? Where, where are your blind spots and who you are? You are who you are. And we don't want to change who you are. We want to leverage your strengths and gifts, talents, and abilities, but um, we don't want to change you. So, but knowing your blind spots and knowing how you may come across to others, again, that will only help you build those strong relationships. And then also as you, let's say you move into down the road, a leadership position, you'll need to know who you need to surround yourself with um, to fill the gaps. Because again, uh, there's, there was this old mentality that we need to, you're one of your weaknesses or we, is this, so we need to make sure you can get there. But I think Gallup, which is on my screen here, is the strength finders. They look at it a little bit different and say, we don't have that strength, but here's the, what you might want to surround yourself with to, you know, and fill those gaps. So that's about team dynamics and understanding who you're working with um, and maybe who your leader is or who you lead down the road, who knows where you'll go, but that's all real important as part of the reflective um, because that matters in, in the workplace. And it's really, it's kind of fun to see, then you know how to engage with people and where your risk points are. And then lastly about find a mentor, you know, internal, external to your environment. It doesn't even have to be in the same field, but somebody that can, will shoot it straight with you that really somebody with some experience that can weigh in and guide you uh, on some, maybe some challenges and encourage you and challenge you. But um, if you don't have a mentor, I would certainly um, advise that you, you find one. And if you need any help finding one, let me know because there's lots of women here um, as an army of nurses that it's a big part of our culture here. So if you're needing someone, I can try to find a connection for you. Um, so let me know that. And then I just included all of my favorite books that probably for the last couple of years that I have read and, and you would find these on my bookshelf. Um, and so these are my go-to books. And I don't know if you recognize any of the, the authors, but John Maxwell, that Chip Heath, Power of Moments, Daniel Pink, the, that one book, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and the Horse, um, that is a really great book. I don't know if any of you have read it. It is a, um, a great book for someone maybe who is graduating, but it um, just, there's lots of friendship and leadership lessons embedded there. Not your traditional leadership book, but I often give that as a gift actually to, to people. Um, and then of course, um, Patrick Lencioni, John Gordon, if you haven't read his stuff, he is all about positivity, the power of um, positivity in the environment and creating that culture that we all want to. Simon Sinek, I'm sure you guys have heard his podcast and his TED Talks likely. Um, and then Permission to Feel, that is just really powerful book and really tapping into your emotional intelligence and, and really allowing yourself to feel, um, especially in the climate. And then I put the Bible up there. That's just me. I lean on that every day because there's nothing better, in my opinion, the leadership lessons than that. And then the Gallup, which we talked about is really that strength finders assessment and some science behind that, which is fun. Right. And then the this one is well-being. So I debated whether to put this in and what content to put it in, but I'm going to go through it and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. But um, so prioritize self-care and well-being. This includes mental health. So what I, I know the evidence is telling us, and, and I'm sure you guys are having these conversations, but really this is for students, for people in the workplace, whether or not you guys know, we are in a crisis, like a mental health crisis. And so I was just doing a little bit of research about students and um, my lens here at the system with my role as a system leader, I'm actually part of um, several teams that are working through behavioral health and I lead actually our suicide prevention team. And so this is really close and dear to me. And actually some things have happened this week that I thought just as a reminder, not to you know, hone in on too much, but just some of the evidence that we're seeing, 80% of, of students feel stressed. More than half the college students met criteria for one psychiatric condition in the past year. And then um, another statistic that I thought was pretty riveting, over the past two years, more than half of um, 18 to 24, 24 year olds report anxiety, half report depressive or disorder, and almost two thirds in that same age group report both. That's pretty staggering from the CDC. So, you know, just, I know this is out there, but um, this week specifically, and I, I did include some pictures 
And I share it not to be a downer because I really care. I care about um, all of you guys. And I, I, we, I, I have college age student or children right now. And I know this is challenging and there's lots of pressures, but I don't know if you guys had heard the news, this, um, this poor track star, sweet girl from the University of Wisconsin ended her own life this year, this week. Um, you know, and really, I thought it was really compelling story that I read because on the outside, we see, you know, this girl, she looks beautiful. She's got it all. She's got a scholarship. She's smart. Um, the bright of, you know, when they describe her, she was this positivity, um, just exuded it and, and really, really shocked everybody. But it really just tells the story is that we don't know what people are going through. And with those statistics, like if we just do the math, half of you guys on the call right now can fall into that, right, of doing the math. So it's just really important that we're, we have the awareness. That's all I'm bringing it because I, I want you guys to take care of the well-being because we don't do that so well. We just don't. And we're, we're not open about it. Um, and the other story, whether or not you guys saw it, just very courageous man, this Harry Miller from Ohio State. I don't know if you guys saw it, but he he has actually a really um, football player from Ohio State um, made this big announcement on the Today Show is stepping off like a medical leave from a um, due to his mental health big move, right? Like so courageous, but again, so prevalent, but I just want to encourage you. So it kind of all comes together really at the end of the day, it's about um, taking care of yourself, having those people you can rely on relationships. So what a lot of what I talked about today was those soft skills, because you're going to have, you have the training, you're going to have the training, but it is really about um, developing those soft skills that will really take you far, but I just never want you to neglect yourself. Um, and again, from a nursing, it's really, a, it's an epidemic here with nursing, as you guys can imagine, the pandemic over the past couple of years, but um, students, you know, you guys have had a atypical last couple of years as well. So these statistics are not that um, surprising, but very staggering nonetheless. So I just wanted to share and encourage you guys to you know, lean into each other, lean into your family and friends and professional resources for help. But then long game, always include that in your professional development plan. When I'm working with someone, um, I really make sure, you know, all my direct reports have a wellness goal or something like, what are you doing for yourself? Um, because there are a lot of pressures and that we're in unprecedented time and it's really important that we do that. So um, I just wanted to end with a quote, and then we'll, we can open up for questions if you guys want, but some closing thoughts, Brene Brown, I'm a big fan of Brene Brown, and I just love this quote, it's you're imperfect, you're wired for struggle, but you're worthy of love and belonging, so I wanted to close with that, and then I can open it up for questions if you guys have any questions. Awesome, thank you so much, that was uh, very informative, I love how you uh, organized that, and that was, yeah, very helpful. Um, I know I have a few questions, but I will open it up to um, anyone else first, if we have any other questions for Mary. And you can put them in the chat too, if you want, you know, say it out loud. Okay, well, I'll start with one of mine. Um, and then maybe people think it's yeah. another one. So um, I know, you know, you're in, you know, the medical field every day. What was, I guess, um, one of the biggest challenges for you with the pandemic and how it just, you know, changed the medical field completely? Like, what was, I guess, one of the biggest challenges and like, what did we learn from that? Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, there's so many lessons learned. Um, here's what I would say. The biggest, you know, we, we went nursing is, I'm sure you see the news, right? There's just uh, the burnout. That's what we're, that's the biggest problem right now is the aftermath of that. And I, I say, and when I give discussions that we talked through this, we went from zero to zero in a matter of moments, right? So, um, it, and the pandemic, there, there was this rally, the community was coming around, but then it, it's like, it's not going away and it keeps 
lingering. And then we have the hope of the vaccine. And then it, um, great, we're hope, you know, rallying around that, but then the divide about the vaccine, and then it's still not going away. And meanwhile, you know, the, the workforce is tiring and, and the mask mandate and just all the challenges quickly turned. And so um, that has been really hard. And, and some, some of my colleagues will say like COVID just like broke nursing, but I will tell you it's, we're recovering. So we're in recovery now where we, we're just rebuilding and, and healing, I guess is the bigger word is we have a lot of healing to do. Um, but on the bright spot, what I will say that that pandemic um, has been the catalyst for a lot of positive change. You know, as with most innovation over time, you know, really occurs when um, times of disruption, right? That's like the perfect time when things happen. And, and you're like, you, you, we need to, we did this because we had to. So we're trying to leverage that momentum um, to make advances in, you know, the way we do business every day, our care model delivery, you know, and, um, and really, it really shine a bright light on what's really an important. And maybe some of those meetings we have, for example, maybe we just need to think differently. And how do we get those short sprints of innovation and change and um, we can really leverage the lessons learned about that. The other big lesson we learned through that was, you know, because we stood up a system-wide incident command, um, which I was my, my senior vice president who I report to, he's the CNE of the entire system, but I was like his second in command for operations. So um, at the system level, we have what, what's called an incident command. We're kind of ready. And then in the early, it was like every hour things were changing, like literally, because we didn't know what we're dealing with, right? So on the hour, things are changing. So what we learned, and one of the um, lessons learned, and we've hung on to it, are tight communications, because it was really fascinating. During that time, like with most employers, they do, they do engagement surveys, right? And it was just happened to be our time to say, you know, it, it just happened. It rolled out it, during this. So our engagement actually in our went up during that time. And it was pretty remarkable. But what they attributed, some of the feedback we received was about, um, they felt so informed and the communication, that tight feedback loop. And that's really hard in a big matrix organization, 16 hospitals across the state, um, all three different shifts. And so that is something we're taking with us and, and that was really good to see, but they felt really supported. Um, so I think we did a good job supporting them as best as we can with what we knew. And then the communication really went a long way. Um, but now I just think everybody's tired to answer your question. And so we have to heal. They went through a lot, you know, through that. And so real deep, like, um, there's people that are experiencing PTSD, right? We're seeing nurses and other physicians leave the industry, maybe rethink it. We're also on the other side, seeing a whole bunch come in and saying, we wanna be a part of that. So, but I think where we're at now is we're on the tail end of it, which is great, but um, healing and, and kind of looking for that new norm because we're never gonna go back to the way things were. It's, um, it's just a new way. And, we're, we're building it as we fly, which is really good. Like it's exciting because it's innovative, it's different, but um, it's just been really hard for everyone. But I don't know if that helps answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That was, yeah, great insight. Some things, you know, like as a lot of us are in the medical field, it's interesting yeah. to see, you know, hear that side of things um, compared to just, you know, what we see in the news or anything, you know, yeah. have a few friends in it. But yeah, no, that was, that's great insight. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have questions? I know you said you were a nurse for a while. What made you want to go into the management side? Yeah, I um I had not envisioned to go into management, to be honest. Um it's really interesting. And I, I would say most of my peers that we talk like, how'd you get in there? Nine out of 10 times, it's someone tapping you on the shoulder who saw something in you and said, hey, I think you'd be really great for this. What I did or, you know, organically is I, I definitely am a fixer. So I was getting involved in, in committee work, um, quality improvement projects, just because I wanted to be involved. And so that kind of started that trajectory and that engagement into, 
you know, developing policies and process improvement and quality, all of that, my leader said, hey, did you, you thought about this? You look like you enjoy this type of work. Have you thought about a career in leadership? And, and so that's actually how it started. Someone said, we have this position. I think you'd be great. Why don't you apply? So, um, and then that's where that went. So um, again, it's, it was great that that person really took an interest in me, right? And that's where for you guys, having those relationships and making those connections early, early on are going to be really key because I think if you probably ask 10 leaders, they'd probably say a somewhat similar story, right? Like somebody saw something in you or said, hey, you look like you'd be great for this and, and made the connection. So um, yeah, so I, I think to start, it was just taking on more than my, my role required. Um, just out of sheer interest. And I, I never had even thought really about leadership, um, but I quickly learned that that was a pathway that I, I was comfortable with and I really liked. So I, I, that's how it all started for me. I have a follow-up question to that. Um, so when you said you were taking on more um, responsibility, did you ever find, um, find it difficult to kind of balance you know, the extra, the extra things you were taking on and, you know, your normal work and your home life, like, was there ever, I guess, an issue trying to find that balance? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and I am, for me personally, I, I love to work, like, I like to work, you know, what I, mean? I really enjoy, I'm really blessed because I really love what I do. What I do aligns with my own personal values and my own personal mission statement. So it's just like a match made in heaven. So sometimes I have to be like, boy. but yes. And so, but the, you know, the beauty of nursing is, um, it really flexible, right? So when my kids were young, I could work, I work part-time or I just work weekends, but you really have to be intentional about setting those boundaries. And that's something that um, when, about well-being and nobody was forcing me, but I was a, um, I just like to get it done, you know, and I had no problem working 12, 14 hours, but um, that wears right. And, and really you have to challenge, you have to question like how effective is someone after the 14, hours, you know? And so um, I think as I got older, and again, it wasn't anybody making me do that. I didn't feel a particular, you know, I read a lot about women in leadership and I, I didn't, I'm in a predominantly women field anyway. So I didn't probably have some of those gender biases that maybe others might experience, to be honest. So I didn't have the pressure that, you know, I'm a woman, I have to work harder, but I felt the pressure to be the best at everything, be the best wife, to be the best mom, to be the best nurse, to be the best leader. Um, and that, that does take its toll. So that is about discipline then and setting boundaries and knowing when is enough is enough. And so that's what I, my team, what we do now. So I help others with that is really, um, you have to just celebrate incremental successes because especially like in a role like we're in and work, there's always work, right? There's always work and there'll always be work. So I encourage my team, we start like with a meeting at the beginning of the week and we will say, all right, what's your week look like? What's your priorities? And, and then we connect again for a brief huddle at the end of the week and we'll say, how did it go? Did you finish everything you wanted to do? Um, what barriers do you have? What support do you need? And then they can leave feeling good about it because they were in the cycle too that, gosh, it just feels like I'm leaving. There's so much undone. But um, we, we're not great at celebrating what we have done, you know, and saying we're making incremental progress. So, but that comes with discipline and setting boundaries and really um, that's on us. Like sometimes we're our own worst enemy. And I'll give you another quick story. What really changed my perspective on that? I was a man. It was I was in a manager role, um, and that I think was really a challenging role because that's kind of a, you work as a frontline nurse, but then you also have leadership duties. But so I was like doing all of my work after the team would go home, get caught up on emails, and I thought, okay, I am killing it. I am done with all my emails, and I'm caught up the day. And I could go home and relax. Well, I was really defeating my team because they're getting emails from me like at eight, nine o'clock. And they're like, are you expecting me to, I, you know, thankfully someone be very candid with me and say, are you expecting me to answer? And 
I'm like, well, no, I just, I wanted to get my work done, but I had no idea what impact I was, you know, having on my team. And so luckily she was older and wiser and said, look, this is making us all feel like, like we should respond. You're our leader. And so I, that was a big turning moment for me um, that I said, okay, so this is, I have to be mindful of that because as a leader, we're setting kind of that expectation, whether we realize it or not, because, um, you know, the old saying leaders, we want to model the behavior that we expect, but I don't want to model that we're going to run people into the ground. <laughs> that wasn't my objective. So I changed then. And it was, it was because someone had the courage to say, Hey, what are you doing? You're killing us. So, um, that was a big aha for me. So Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. Very, very insightful. And you guys I, well, so are, you're a generation. I hate to say that, but it's a thing. We have to talk about the gen. You guys are, um, you're better at it <laughs> than, than us really about, you know, you want, you work hard, but you're able to walk away, like set those boundaries. That's really healthy. That's really healthy actually. And very refreshing. And so having the multi-general workforce or generational is really great in our environment because we all can learn from each other. Um, I was reading a little bit about, uh, I didn't know if you had any adult learners on your, in this class or if it was all about the same age group. I don't know. Is there a mix here? Um, I think it's about the, the same. We're either, yeah, freshmen to seniors. Okay. Same, okay. So, so yeah, like 18 to 22. Okay. Yeah, so I was reading about that and what, you know, the attributes and um, I think you guys are really positioned for success, actually. So it's it's encouraging, but I think maybe you might, you might, you guys might have to be mindful that some of the students that I, um, I have some interns from the Kelly School Business and um, what I'm noticing is you know, they're, they're really hard on themselves sometimes, you know, and even like the young, younger nurses, it's um, the expectations and maybe that, I don't know if it's a generation or our own personal attributes like that we would find if we do those personality tests, but um, I try to encourage them to celebrate the successes, right? And it's okay not to be perfect. And, you know, you learn from mistakes and guess what? We're going to fail. Like it happens. So, brace yourself and it's okay. And then you fail forward and you move on. Um, sometimes we're our own worst critic, right? And that those inner voices that we hear, it's just, um, just it's not healthy. So that's what I, I, I know you guys are under a lot of pressure with the environment we're in the world we're in, I can't imagine, but um, do you guys feel like, do you feel the pressures? Does that resonate with anybody? What I shared on the wellness screen? Does that surprise you, those stats? Unfortunately, no. no. I don't think so. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's weird to see it in number format. I mean, yeah. you know, you hear all about it all the time, but just seeing that, those numbers, it's, yeah, not surprising, but it's, yeah, sad. Yeah, and then the, the social media, like, it's just, it's like the perfect storm, right? It's just the pandemic yeah. and the atypical life for two years and, social media and the pressures and yeah so I feel I feel for you guys I really do so just lean into each other is, is what I would say if you can find someone that you can confide in and be open it's such a game changer it's really scary to be transparent and vulnerable but that's I don't know if you guys have read Brene Brown but that's kind of her whole mantra is about being vulnerable um, and it's hard and it's not comfortable but it is really life-changing when you can do that and in even we as leaders, sometimes um, we think that we shouldn't be vulnerable. Like we have to be stoic and tough all the time, but that's not what research tells us. And I could tell you when I'm connecting with my, my team the most is when I'm sharing, you know, how I really feel because it humanizes, really, you know, like it humanizes, like I feel that way too. And so if hopefully you guys all can, you have friends that you can have those conversations. And if not, maybe you can be intentional about that because everybody goes through that and needs that support, especially at the time we're in now. So, but I was sad to read those statistics. It was pretty jarring. I was like, wow, pretty shocking. Any other questions? 
Um, I did want to ask, you had mentioned, you know, setting boundaries and making sure you have those healthy boundaries with um, coworkers and bosses. Um, has that ever backfired for you? I mean, has anyone taken that, you know, taken your boundaries as, you know, you being lazy or, you know, something like that? I guess the stereotypical, I guess, response to that. Like, did have you ever personally experienced that? think about that I'm not the great at setting boundaries to be honest so yeah let me think about it um you know I don't think so honestly I I I don't think it's backfired ever as long as you convey it right because if you just it it might appear as but I think actually it's really interesting that you said that because I in preparation for this I was just trying to read and see what are the current trends and stuff that was one of the, we are afraid to set boundaries, women in general, the population, because it would might be perceived as, you know, weak, we don't want to help, we don't want to be perceived that way, that we can't handle a heavy workload, um, when quite conversely, it's a sign of a maturity and, and really advocating for yourself. So I've gotten better with the boundary setting, but um I, yeah, I don't recall, the, no, I haven't had anything backfire. What that looks like in my role now is, um, you know, not now, maybe it's not a no, because there's work is constantly coming, right? Like, hey, we gotta do this, hey, we gotta do this. And so, and that's just another thing. We can't do everything or we're ineffective, right? We have to focus and not saying we have to work at one thing at a time, but we do need an element of focus and we can't be spreading ourselves so thin. So. Um, I encourage my team to say, that's a great thing. That sounds like something we probably can evaluate down the road. Maybe it's a not now. Um, it's not a no, it's a not now. If we need to do it now, then we probably need to reevaluate. So um, if you convey it like that, I think it's all in the messaging, right? So um, I have been on the other end of that though, conversely, where it's, um, I actually have had a leader that's not my job. Like, that's pretty, like, you know, it backfired on me. Like somebody is just setting boundaries on their side, but that didn't land well for me as a colleague, right? Like, well, that, you know, I didn't know how I felt about that. So um, that's not the, the way to do that, right? So in collaboration, but there's a different way to craft that, but that was probably their way of saying boundary setting. Oh, well, that's not my line of work. Here's where I work, but um, again, with collaboration, it's just more and more we're going to, we, we are highly collaborative and it's very few roles that just work in a silo and in a vacuum. So I don't think I've ever experienced that though, personally, to answer your question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? So I have a question for you guys, if you don't mind. About Go ahead. From, I'm just curious, like, what do you guys do for, do you find for well-being? How do you balance that all that you have going on, you know, and, and what works for you guys? And um, do you have something in your back pocket? And I guess my first question is, do you recognize when you need to, would you know when you need to intervene? And then like, what does that look like? What, how do you decompress? How do you? What does wellness look like for you guys? I'd like to understand. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I also, yeah, struggle with, oh, I have this to do, this to do, this to do. I'm actually graduating in a few weeks. So trying to figure out everything, you know, to finish up school and um, my job that I'll start at the end of the year. So um, I think, yeah, I kind of have trouble recognizing when to relax sometimes. Um, but luckily I um, have great friends and support systems that can kind of realize it for me. Um, kind of what you say, what you're saying, like, you know, surround yourself with supportive people. Um, and I actually got into reading recently, which I never did before for fun. Um, yeah. But that, yeah, just at the end of the night, I'll sit down and read, drink some tea. Um, if I need to decompress during the day, Sometimes I'll take a nap, which I don't know if that's the most effective way to do that, but I'll do it sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, reading's kind of been my escape. Perfect. Perfect. Um, mine would definitely be I read too, 
get outside when it's sunny for sure. I just take a break, yeah. work out, and just sure. have like a little morning routine or go to a coffee shop. Just take that time each day. Sure. Very good. I mean, it's really hard when we don't see the sun in Indiana for months. <laughs> so that doesn't help at all, right? Yeah. Oh, good. Jacqueline, I see Jacqueline on my screen, your name. How about you? So I have a bad cycle of like pushing myself past my limit. And um, one thing that plays like a big role in my life is working out. And recently over the summer, I got this thing called a whoop. Mm -hmm. And it helps me keep track of my like activity strain and it like compares that to my sleep and how well I slept. So being able to, um, being able to, uh, reflect like in the morning, like, Hey, I didn't sleep well last night. I'm going to take it kind of easy on myself today. And it, that allows me to like, it gives you a recovery, like 69 to hundred percent is green and everything below is yellow or red. And realizing my sleep and how much activity I had the day before and how much stress I had with school and what I have on my plate. Mm -hmm. I try to balance that back to just sleeping. And that helps me realize like, Hey, I need a break. I've been going too much this week or the past two weeks. And it's, I haven't gotten sick as much in the past six months by doing that. So that's really, it's been beneficial for me. Yeah. That's super intentional. Really good. That's awesome. Um, I'd say for me, um, I find myself a lot of the time, like I like to get all my work done before I let myself like have fun or anything. I catch myself doing that a lot, but kind of like, or at least I like to get most of my work done. So it's kind of like a reward for me sometimes to like get all my work done. So I don't have to worry about it, but, um, just to decompress, like, I like to like hang out with my friends and watch Netflix. Um, I like to have like something at least to do before I go to bed at night, just to like relax before I go to sleep. Yeah. So that's what I do. Perfect. Perfect. Anyone else want to share? I think Ashley said in the chat, um, she said she agrees with Margot and she'll go outside and get away from technology. Yes, 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 yes. Good. Well, I'm glad. It's hard to de it's hard to detach, right? And get into that mindfulness. So um, I'm glad you guys are, are have strategies in place. You know, the one book, I don't, you know, if you're looking for a book for those readers, that permission to feel is really, it's, it's pretty incredible. So it, it sounds so simplistic, but really at the essence of it, the book is really recognizing how we're feeling um, and then working through it and knowing that we might be in a place where we just need to hang and we're going to be low for a little bit and we're not ready to get out, you know, but um, it's just putting it into words and really being able to identify it. Um, but so much more. It was, we read it as a, actually as a leadership team within IU Health because um, it was really powerful. Uh, because, you know, you think about the, you, you know, the burnout and the pressure and just, you guys know it, you know what you're going through every day, but sometimes it's really hard to articulate that. And so it rears its ugly head in different ways. Like I'm snapping at people or I'm grouchy or, you know, or tearful or, and, but really there's root things deeper and there's um, something causing that visceral response that really probably has nothing to do with <laughs> the moment at hand. So I just thought it was really good. So we're, we're big about mindfulness here in really giving um, our everybody, and you know, it doesn't matter if you're a nurse, but just our team members, we really encourage that, the mindfulness and really taking time. Um, we have lots of good programs around that because it's just, it's impacting everyone. No one's immune really. So just be sure you guys keep that in the forefront. And, and if I could ever help in any way, I can share my contact, you know, please reach out. If you guys ever have questions or, or need help with something or, um, or struggling with something, you know, you can always reach out. We're here to help as well, so. Thank you for that, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. 
And is it okay? So you said your contact information. I think we have your email. Is that okay to share with yes. people when we post and stuff? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yep. And I didn't, I do, would you guys want the presentation or because I can send it to someone? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. And then I can include my contact information there. So um, perfect. Yeah, you can just, you can send it in that chain if you want with, okay. um, but with Grace and all of us. Yeah. Perfect. And then my, my, e my cell is on there too in my tagline. So okay. free, but yeah, if you guys have any perfect. follow up questions or, um, I hope this is uh, hit the mark. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Grace said, whatever you feel like sharing. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So this is what's <laughs> top of mind for me. I, I'm really worried about everybody, to be honest. But And I want you guys to feel empowered and use your voice as women. And um, you're going to be awesome. I'm so impressed with um, everybody that I'm meeting. Like, it, like at the colleges, it's just so impressive, the talent that is coming out. So Wishing all of you the best of luck on your future. Are all of you graduating? Is that where we're at? Or what? what's the, okay. Yeah, I think majority on here, um, I think I'm the only one that's graduating, but I know of. Mm -hmm. It's me and one other exec member. I think she has class during this time too. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of young people in the group, which is really exciting. Good, yeah, very exciting. All right, well, take care of yourselves if you guys, have any takeaways at all, just take care of yourself. The rest will work itself out, I promise. And feelings pass. Never act on a feeling. They pass and they come and go and you'll get through whatever it is you might be going through. Um, and then that imposter syndrome, you tackle that, you recognize that head on. And remember, where, wherever you land, you earn that spot. And so don't let that take you out. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much again. We really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us. And um, yeah. So. All right. You guys have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye, everyone.